Hello and welcome. This is part three in my video tutorial series, showing you how to create your own cartoon from start to finish. In this video, I'm gonna be using Clip Studio Paint to show you how I create a character turnaround that you can then use for your particular project. If you don't have Clip Studio Paint, that's okay. You can still follow along if you have a basic understanding of another art software. This will be the design that we're going to be using when building our character rig in the 2D animation software Toon Boom Harmony. But you don't have to worry about that until the next video. Let's get started. As this drawing did take a while to do, I've made it a time lapse and I'm just going to explain my thoughts and processes as we go through. I made a 5000 by 3000 pixel canvas with a resolution of 300 and I like to draw on a grey background just so it's easier on the eyes and not so glaring. I started a new layer for the draft and I had a vague idea of what I wanted the character to look like, but normally I just work most things out as I go. I knew I wanted to have this teardrop head shape with a circular base and I normally start from the head and work my way down. And by the way, feel free to follow along and copy this particular drawing or you can use this technique for your own character. If you are here to learn Toon Boom in the next videos and you're not really interested in designing a character, I will be making this turnaround available in the description below for you to download. Back to the drawing, I am starting with the quarter pose first, as that is the angle we are going to be seeing most in our animation. And in most television cartoon series, if say two characters are talking to each other, they would not be shown side onto the viewer as you might expect to see in real life, but instead at a quarter angle so we can read their expressions better and it just looks a lot more appealing to the eye. At this stage, it's just about working out the basic forms of the body and not worrying too much about the details until later on. You can see that I've added some guidelines down the head and the torso just so it's clear in my mind where that center line is and also brought in a vertical ruler just so it helps me keep the character balanced as I'm drawing. I'm using a default pen with zero stabilization which you can adjust in the tool properties window here. You can drag a ruler from here or you can use the ruler tool here. If you don't want your pen strokes to snap to the ruler, just click this button up here. I do regularly flip the canvas, that helps me to see any mistakes which I might have made, which you can do from the edit menu, but because I do use it quite frequently, I've assigned a shortcut for it via the shortcut settings, which you can access under the file menu. I like to do my drafts using small strokes at first, and I will continuously use the lasso tool to select different parts of the character and adjust the positioning and proportions as I go. I'm taking perspective into consideration, so the leg and the arm furthest away from us will be slightly above the ones nearer to us. This character design is relatively basic, and I like to keep the shapes quite simple because we are going to be using this to build a 2D character rig from it later on in Toon Boom, so try not to overcomplicate things if you don't need to, especially if you're new to character design and rigging. But even though it is a simple design, making a strong and clear character silhouette is an important part of making an effective character turnaround. So now we're starting to add a little bit more detail as I'm starting to be more comfortable with the overall shape of the character, so facial features and clothing. Because it is a quarter angle, I've made the furthest eye a little bit squashed as it is on a curved surface. and then I'm spending a little bit of time making a logo for the shirt, which will be a sun design, taking advantage of the symmetry ruler. I designed the logo front on, and then using the scale rotate tool, adjust the handles by holding control to skew it and shape it for the quarter angle. Again, just making minor adjustments as I go using the selection tool. Now that I'm happy with that angle, it's time for the front view. So I made a new layer and added all these horizontal guides just so we can maintain the correct levels between the angles, which is important to keep consistent because if it's not, that can really become quite obvious when it comes to animation if the angle of the character changes. 
For the front view, I did move the quarter angle underneath and lowered the transparency so that I could use it as a guide to help me with positioning and again, taking advantage of that symmetry ruler so that I didn't have to worry about making both sides equal and to save time. Moving on to the side view, you can see again, I've duplicated the quarter angle to use as a guide, just like I did with the front view. The top of the head does curve back a little bit as he turns to the side, and I made sure to make the torso thinner for this view. I did angle the legs back slightly just because I thought it looked a little bit better and it is common to have the furthest leg appear slightly in front of the other just so that it doesn't look so flat. The backwards angle is super easy because all you need to do is duplicate the front angle and then you can erase the face and the logo and then update the hands and feet just so they're pointing away from us. So as you can see, it tends to get a little bit easier as we go because we can use the angles that we've already made as a visual guide. For the back quarter angle, I did base it off the quarter angle and did a similar thing with what I did for the back angle, but I flipped the head in the opposite direction and adjusted the overall body shape to make him look like he was facing away from us. So that's the hardest part out of the way, so we can arrange all these angles, space them out to look nice, I merged the layers together, and then it was time for my favourite part of the process, which is the line work. When doing line work in Clip Studio Paint, something I highly recommend is making a vector layer, which you can select here, rather than a raster layer. The vector layer works in exactly the same way, except when you cross or overlap lines, you can erase whole lines with the vector eraser in one click without disturbing the other line or having to make additional layers, which saves so much time and was an absolute game changer for me when I switched from Photoshop. You can enable the vector eraser in the tool property window here. You can also adjust points within the line to fine tune them and adjust the thickness of the entire line after you've made them with the correct line tool found here very helpful. For this style of character, I wanted to have very clean, smooth lines, so I'm using the pen tool with 40 stabilization, which will help with smoothing those lines out. I just duplicated the pen tool with this button here, and I have one with stabilization and one without, just so I don't have to constantly change the stabilization every time I want to use the pen tool for different purposes. I wanted to make sure all the lines were the same size, so I took note of the line thickness so they would all be the same, apart from where they taper off at the line ends. 
Because I wanted the base of the head to be perfectly circular, I did use the circle tool and holding control allows you to maintain a square aspect ratio. I prefer creating the circles from the center, which you can change the options for in the tool property settings found here. I used a lot of straight lines for this character as well, so using the pen tool, if you hold shift, it will make a straight line from the last place you clicked. For freehand lines, make sure you do each stroke with confidence. For me, it's pretty rare that I get it right straight away, so don't be afraid of undoing as many times as you need to and zoom in as necessary to get it as accurate as you can. I always like to rotate the canvas as well with R to favor the way I can best make that stroke with my hand. Next was the color, so not a lot to talk about here, but I went for something nice and bright and appealing. So yellow as a primary to fit in with that sun aesthetic that I was going for, then using pink and blue with white accents. I like to use matching colors for the different items of clothing, but never have the same colors touching if I can help it. Remember to set the line work as a reference layer with this button here. That will allow the fill for the layers underneath to stay within the lines, and you can control how much the color goes beyond the lines in the tool properties window here, which is another really nice feature in CSP, which saves a lot of time. And here he is, one completed character turnaround that we will be using to build our character rig from in Toon Boom Harmony, which will be in the next video tutorial, so stay tuned for that. For those of you still here, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below and I'll do my very best to answer them. Or ask me over on Twitch where I stream this stuff live five days a week. If you did find this video useful and you want to see more of them in the future, please consider liking and subscribing. Your support really does go a long way. And if you do want to keep up to date with future videos, you can click that notification bell. In the next video, we're going to be heading into Toon Boom Harmony to start building our character rig based from this design. See you in the next one. Goodbye!